OBS has hundreds of plugins available on their forms, and I'm gonna show you my favorite today. Welcome back, guys. I'm Cassie Joe, and I'm your stream witch. Stream witch? No, that doesn't work. Everyone's calling themselves stream wizards. I gotta go with the female equivalent, right? Someone in the comments is like, down with the gender norms. Welcome back, guys. I'm Cassie Joy. I'm a streamer on Twitch. I make content on every platform imaginable from TikTok to YouTube to Twitter to Instagram. And I've been doing it for a very long time. Throughout all of that time, I have been using OBS since its infancy. I remember the very first version of OBS Classic. It was garbage, but it was free compared to Wirecast and XSplit. And it's only matured into a beautiful buggy software that we know today. OBS has a lot of quirks, but the best part about its quirks are is it's open source, which allows developers to make plugins for it to allow you to expand your OBS to fit your needs. I'm gonna go over my top seven today. So if you're interested in upping your game or trying out some new stuff in OBS, you should see this video through. Links to everything is in the description if you just wanna skip everything. Please don't. Up first is OBS Virtual Cam. If you've ever used XSplit before, it has a handy dandy little feature in it that allows you to take your XSplit capture window, anything that's in your X your XSplit, and use that as a webcam source. It's super it's super useful when doing Skype calls. Yes, there are still businesses that use Skype. Or if you have a capture card that doesn't allow you to output directly to like Discord or something. So the basic way to do it is to click on tools and right underneath tools, you'll see virtual webcam. That'll bring up a window that will allow you to set your target camera, buffered frames, auto start, horizontal flip, keep aspect ratio, all this stuff. You don't really need to touch any of this besides start. Go to Discord or whatever your video capturing software that you're using is and just set the target camera to the same as in OBS. So it'd be OBS camera. And ta-da, now you can stream your entire OBS setup to somebody through Discord or Skype or something. If you're only looking to send like your desktop capture or just your webcam or something, you can also do a filter on a source and add a virtual cam to that. And as long as the, you click the start button, uh, it starts streaming through that camera. It's the same setup. Number two is a little bit more of a use case if you need it sort of scenario plugin, but it's still useful to know that it exists. Next up is the OBS NDI. NDI is a network-based video protocol that allows you to transmit high quality, low latency HD video over an ethernet connection. Surprisingly, I use this a lot in my professional life. Network video is starting to like really take over the broadcast industry. Where this is useful is if you have multiple computers in the house, or say you're setting up a if, if you're a if you're a co-op channel in particular, and you don't you don't have the money to invest in a capture card right away, or you have computers in multiple rooms where using a capture card and running a lot of HDMI isn't really viable. You can set this up to transmit video from one one computer's OBS setup to another. And I'm not really gonna go over how to use it in this video because it's actually pretty complicated to set up uh, to get it working right. But if you guys would like to know more about NDI, let me know in the comments below and I can do a video on that. I've actually used it quite a bit for work. Number three is probably one of the most important plugins on this list. For, for me, maybe for you guys, if you use stinger transitions or you do a lot of cutting between scenes, you sometimes, I know I had this problem before I discovered this plugin. I, I have this, I do this thing on camera and getting, jumping from one scene to the next scene to the next scene and then stinger transitioning back to my game scene was something that would never work out right because you could, you could only set one type of transition in OBS or the OBS uh, transition overrides only allow you to set it to that scene. The OBS transition matrix allows you to set transitions to go from any scene to another scene back to this scene. And it allows you to just customize your transitions going between scenes. So if you're doing bits, you're not having a weird transition in between them. You can set custom transitions from, so say I wanna go from my gaming screen to my chatting screen to my BRB screen but when I go from my BRB screen to my gaming scene, I want it to be a different transition than when I'm going from my uh, chat scene to my gaming scene. The OBS transition override matrix allows you to do this. It takes a little bit of playing with to figure it out, but oh my God, it's such a lifesaver if you do a lot of switch stream switching during your stream. I cannot live without it now. Number four, 
You may have heard this one before if you use the Streamlabs bot or there's a couple other, there's a couple mixer bots that use the OBS WebSocket plugin. So you've probably had to install it before. OBS WebSocket is basically a control API that allows you to control OBS via uh, WebSockets, which is a, a kind of a control API. I'm not a, I'm not a developer. I can't tell you what it actually does. I just know that it's really cool. You should use it if you use integrated, if you want to use integrated features inside of Streamlabs bot that allow you to your chat to trigger things inside of OBS. It, it allows those sorts of interactions. Also, if you don't have a stream deck, somebody has developed a tablet remote via WebSockets. It's really cool. So you start WebSockets, you go to you you go to the link in the video description for the tablet remote and it will bring up all your scenes for you and you can punch around on your scenes through this tablet remote. This is super useful if you don't have a stream deck, but maybe you have an old phone or an iPad laying around and you can control your stream via those buttons, those touch buttons in that tablet remote over the Wi-Fi. It's super useful and I used it for a very long time before I got the stream deck. Five and six, I'm gonna talk about together. They probably should have just been one filter, but they're two, they're technically two separate plugins. One is OBS shader filter and the other is motion effects. Both of these add very unique and customizable shaders and filters to your OBS. It allows you to do crazy movement with your webcam. It allows you to do really cool real-time generative filters like fire effects on your web, on your cam or any of your scenes. They're really cool. They go very hand in hand together. If you guys have not seen already, I suggest you go subscribe to youtube.com slash defrag. He is a guru when it comes to this stuff and he has plenty of tutorials on how to do some really cool webcam effects and screen sh like screen effects for your stream using these two plugins. You should go check them out. And last but not least, I don't use this one as much as I should or as much as I would like to rather. This is a throwback to any of you who have been streaming on Twitch for a very long time. I'm sure you all remember that time where every Minecraft streamer had the Winamp visualizer on their screen, on their like intro screens and stuff, and it was just bumping in the music and stuff. This is called Spectralizer. It's an OBS plugin that's fairly new that allows you to have just playing stuff on your screen. It allows you to have an audio, a fully customizable audio visualizer. It's just, I wanted this for years to be able to have this directly in OBS to be, have a better customizable version of the Winamp Spectralizer that was more easily captured. This is chef kiss. Ah, so great. That is my top seven OBS plugins of 2020 so far. Guys, if there was any cool plugins that I missed that you would like to see me cover in depth later, be sure to drop them in the comment below. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more. I will see you guys next time. This has been Cassie Joy. Peace out.